I have been climbing the ranks super fast this season and it was a build that nobody is talking about. For this build, I'm not playing any ARs and now we're not using any SMGs either. What we are doing for this one is play two sniper rifles. And now this sounds really weird, but I legit believe this really outperforms any AR in the game. But before we get into the build, we need to talk about the patch notes because surprisingly, it looks like Epic might have seen this coming. Mm. My name is TSK, I am the Sniper King and let's get into it. But yes, first up, Striker Air saw a very small nerf. It's a uh, one damage on all rarities. It does actually matter quite a bit, even if it looks like completely nothing. Because for example, on Legendary, you now need nine shots for an elimination on a full 250 health enemy instead of eight shots. So while this is actually just a one damage nerf, in practice, it actually does make a little difference. Also make our double sniper build look a slight bit better. However, in my opinion, it was already better last patch. Let's continue. Medallions, guys. Medallions took the biggest hit this patch. They do not regen your shield to 100 anymore. This is a huge deal. They still do if you have all five medallions, but if you get to that point at the game, you probably already won anyways. How it works exactly is with one medallion, you recover 50 shield max, exactly like the shieldies. With the second one, 60. The third, 70. With four, you get 85 shield. And then finally with five, you get all 100. The shield region also stops now for three seconds when damaged. And the circle radius is smaller by 60%, which is insanely large. Meaning it's going to be even easier for enemies to track you down, which obviously makes picking up medallions a little bit more of a risk. And the reward is way smaller. This 100% changes the build as well. Once we get to the loadout aspect of this video, I'll explain exactly why. Let's move on. Ballistic shield surprisingly saw a very small buff. Also just uh, one damage. I personally thought they're going to nerf it because most people just seem to be annoyed by it. I don't see many people that really want to play it. It's kind of disgusting, not gonna lie. But I don't think it's very relevant. My build deals with it, no problem. And yeah, I really, I really haven't had much problems with this. Next up, Ranger Pistol actually saw a buff. I do think people are sleeping on this. It did get a one damage buff on common. In all other rarities, it's a two damage buff. And I legit think it was already at the verge of being meta, to be honest. We're not playing that for our build either. But I will drop a video on this because I also think there's a lot of potential here. Next up, Thunderburst SMG. The weapon that absolutely nobody plays, I think. I literally, I don't think I fought against it a single time in a late game. It did get the three bullets uh, buff, meaning one full more burst. Does it really matter? I'm not sure. I just feel like the whole weapon feels kind of clunky. I'm gonna test it a little bit, perhaps with a red eye sight, but I just don't believe in a weapon. The drum mod magazine got buffed as well, by the way. Another two extra bullets. So in total, you will go up to 36 bullets with this, which is actually a bit, doesn't sound too bad. But I don't know. I just don't like the weapon very much. Next up, flowberries. The shield gain has been increased from 10 to 15. That is insanely good, to be honest. I like dropping next to fencing fields. And um, there's like, obviously, pretty much an unlimited amount of these there. And this just like lets you regen so much faster than the early game. I don't think I'm going to be picking these up in the late game because of this. However, guys, since we are no longer fully regenerating with the medallions and we just need some extra 50 shield in most situations now, perhaps it's worth uh, trying this out. However, I think this mainly affects me personally for my uh, drop spot because I really do think this uh, further buffs fencing fields, which was already really good. So meta wise, I think it just makes that area a little bit better. I don't think it's going to make it more contested, but dropping there will feel slightly better. Better. Next up, Snowball Launcher got nerfed by two bullets. And Shield Breaker EMP has been buffed by 10 guys. Hey guys, this is why I actually believe Epic Games kind of saw the double snipe build coming. They nerfed the spawn rate of the sniper rifle by 42%. That is insane. And it for sure will make it slightly harder to actually get two sniper rifles. The thing is though, for this build, you absolutely have to go onto a vault. And I don't think the vault spawn rates are affected by this. And you always get two sniper rifles there. And the spawn rates honestly were so high of sniper rifles. I think you will still get at least one sniper rifle every game anyways. So I actually think maybe they had this in mind. Maybe they didn't want people to have two sniper rifles by the time they get into the vault. We'll see how this plays out. Okay, now that we're done with the patch notes, let's talk about the build before we hop into the mm. sniper attachments after. Oh no, it's time for the zero build tag. We gotta like the video fast. First up, build. Again, I just think the superior shotgun is the auto shotgun. It will be pretty perfect for our build here as well, since we're not gonna have an AR, we're not gonna have an SMG. So we have pretty much no follow up at all for the shot for the pump shotgun, guys. This is why the auto shotgun is an absolute must here. Second, we will use our close range sniper rifle. Again, talking about attachments in the next point. But let me tell you guys the thought process behind this. This chapter, sniper rifles have been 
been absolutely broken so far. I think they are by far the best weapon in the game, mainly because the map is so large and obviously the base sniper is just really strong with the three bullets, one shot headshots on any rarity, fast bullet speed and fast attack speed. I legit think the Reaper sniper rifle is probably the all time best sniper rifle in Fortnite. And what you also use was an AR for like these mid range situations. You want to get some damage in before you push with the auto shotgun. Okay. But what if I told you instead of doing that, which is how you usually want to do roughly 100 damage before you do the push, you can do exactly that way better with a sniper rifle. All it takes is literally one shot, which allows you to be in line of sight of the enemy for way, way shorter amount of time, thus being way more secure and having a way higher chance of having the HP advantage before taking the push. Of course, the downside is you missed the snipe, you did zero damage. Well, if you miss some AR bullets, you still do some damage. But the good thing is you don't have to push if you don't hit the shot. You have two more bullets in your sniper rifle and if you upgrade it to a five bullet mag, which we will talk about in a second, you will have five bullets. So to be honest, this is actually not risky at all. Plus, you obviously also have the chance of just hitting the headshot and completely one-shotting the enemy. And yeah, as I said, talking about medallions real quickly again, since they only region you to half HP, uh, shield, sorry, I suggest running big shields again. I just made a full loadout video the other day where I talk about all the other weapons in depth as well, guys. By the way, check it out for sure. It's still super relevant. However, there I recommend going for med kits but, but now for me that's completely out of the question you're looking for big shields maybe for flow berries but i don't think you can really go on with uh, big shields shield fish also super legit if you have a good farming route for containers for example or you want to go fishing in between i do actually recommend those over the big shields because it's just way faster here and yeah movement i actually personally still recommend the grapple <laughs> Over the shockwave nades, guys. And that is because I feel like I'm using movement so much this season. Yes, shockwave nades are the superior movement, but they do run out where the grapple does not. And trust me, having a grapple is insanely much better than having no movement at all. I think that makes sense to everyone. And yeah, this guide is all about maximizing your win probability. And I think for that, grapple is enough movement most of the time. For pushing, it's equally as good. For running away, yes, advantage on the shockwave grenades. To be honest, this is also a little bit of a personal choice for you guys. My recommendation, grapple hook. Okay, as promised, attachments, guys. This is the source. This is what you're here for, guys. First up, you will use your higher rarity sniper rifle for close range and your lower level sniper rifle for long range. I'll explain why. On long range, you can perfectly choose the moment where you want to push. You can either try again for the headshot or hit a couple more body shots before you do the push. Whereas your close range sniper rifle will most of the time just be one shot and any extra damage you do is damage you don't need to do with the auto shotgun afterwards. And this can very well be the difference of at least one auto shotgun shot. And that's actually drastically changing how long it takes you to finish the enemy. Super important. First up, attachments for the long range sniper rifle. You will go with a four times scope, the drum mech, because these extra two bullets are 100% worth it, guys. Then you go for the angled foregrip to get quick ADS. This will make the difference of an enemy getting behind cover or not before you hit that first snipe. And then you can go for the suppressor. But if people are using directional audio, they will still see where your snipe is coming coming from so i don't think this is worth it the muzzle break useless for long range so no need to spend your money here on this attachment and this is the spicy one the close range sniper rifle first up i like using the red eye and i think the hollow is worse for this purpose however if you really enjoy it you can use it it also comes on many of the ground level uh, sorry ground loot sniper rifles so if you want to save some money it's one less attachment for you to uh, purchase in the vault and next up on this one super important as well the drum mag of course pretty uh, self-explanatory going from three bullets to five is a 66 percent increase absolutely insane then again angled foregrip don't go for the vertical i know you might think yeah this is my close range weapon i need a better recoil but you really don't the attack speed is slow enough that it really does not matter so go for the angled and then again suppressor super useless on this but you can play around with the muzzle break i couldn't say i really saw much improvement trying to play it it felt literally exactly the same but test it if you want so guys summary the close range sniper rifle over an ar and over an SMG because we get a quicker burst that allows us to push faster. We take the higher rarity sniper rifle for close range. We upgrade the magazines. We take shields over med kits, grapple over shockwave, push the vault early game to upgrade and take the epic victory royale home. Okay.
Hope you guys enjoyed the build. Still make sure to check out my last build. I think it's still legit. Again, apart from medkits over shield. Thanks for watching, guys. Would be cool if you could leave a subscribe if you enjoyed the content. Because there's more to come, guys. Next up will be a pistol video. The other big sleeper pick of this season. Easy for me, guys. Let's go. Cheers.